The key feature of our brains is that they change. We learn. Now the fancy term for this is plasticity. Now, this can happen in a number of ways. So first, we can simply form new neurons in areas of our brain. So there's a part of the brain called the hippocampus, and this is thought to be where spatial reasoning takes place. So in a study of New York cab drivers, they found that the hippocampus for these cab drivers was abnormally large. They have special neurons to help them navigate the crazy streets of New York. A similar thing was found in the motor cortex of concert violinists. The motor cortex of these violinists was also abnormally large, helping them control the frets on the violin. So this is one way. A second way is by changing the pathways of the neurons, the different um, paths through the brain that lines of neurons take. And this is done by a process called myelination. So special cells called myelin form a sheath. around the axons of the neurons. And these, once these sheaths are formed, signals can go down these neurons faster and stronger. And so this is another way of learning, by controlling the neuronal pathways. And a final way is by actually modifying the neurons themselves. Um, this is a process known as long-term potentiation, or LTP for short. And so here's one example of how that happens. There's a special neurotransmitter called glutamate, and it's a very excitatory neurotransmitter. So, for our purposes, we're going to call this glutamate. This chemical drawing right here. Now, glutamate binds to two different receptors in the brain. One is a non-NMDA receptor. This is a plain receptor, just like the normal receptor-gated channels that we dealt with before. So, glutamate can come in here, bind to the non-NMDA receptor, and this opens up a channel so that sodium can enter the brain. Okay, pretty normal stuff. We dealt with that already. But glutamate can also bind to another type of receptor, and this is called an NMDA receptor, or we'll think of it as the fancy receptor. And this receptor is special. First of all, it has a, a blockage by magnesium. And so what this causes it to be is that it's both receptor-gated and also voltage-gated at once. So the glutamate comes over and binds to this NMDA receptor, but that's not enough to open the channel. It also must have a voltage inside the cell that is positive enough to overcome this blockage by the Mg, by the magnesium. So, here's what happens. Glutamate binds to the non-NMDA receptors, and it'll bind to a bunch of those, and they'll slowly let sodium in. And so that'll go, you kind of get a buildup, start to get a signal. But eventually, it reaches a threshold. It reaches a point where it can overcome the voltage gate on this receptor, on the NMDA receptor. So at this point, the glutamate has bound to the NMDA receptor. There's enough positive charge in here to overcome the voltage gate, and magnesium goes away. It gets washed out and in floods a ton of sodium but also another element. We also get calcium, which we'll see is important for long-term change. So what we have is a non-linear type of learning. So first you kind of build up slowly and slowly. It is linear at first with these non-NMDA plain receptors. Sodium comes in more and more and more, but then we hit this threshold when suddenly the NMDA receptor can open up, letting in this stream of sodium and also calcium. And so this is kind of like how we think learning works. You kind of try something for a number of times, it's not, not really working, and then suddenly it clicks. You get it. It's like that flood, that flood of ions. Now this is a really simplified version. It's probably much more complicated than that. But this gives us a glimpse for how something like learning might happen. And they actually found some interesting experimental evidence for this. They did the Doogie Hauser mouse experiment. So they created smart mice by giving them a bunch of extra non-NMDA receptors. 
and they had dumb mice with very few non-NMDA receptors. So think about it. If you have a lot of these non-NMDA receptors, that means quickly there's going to be a lot of sodium coming into the cell and very soon you'll overcome that voltage gate and get the flood of sodium and calcium. And so these mice, sure enough, turned out to be smart. They learned really quickly. Whereas the dumb mice, who had very few of these NMDA receptors, it took them a long time to reach that threshold. And sure enough, they did turn out to be dumb. It took them a long time to learn. Now, there's an interesting side note here. Um, the dumb mice, if put in a stimulating social environment, could actually become smart. So it's a quick warning that genes and chemical makeup aren't everything, that our environment has a huge effect. Now what makes the glutamate story especially interesting is the long-term changes that this initiates. And this is done by the calcium, which starts all sorts of processes in the cell. So it sends a chemical signal back to the previous neuron, um, telling that neuron to send more glutamate the next time. It mobilizes brand new receptors to create a stronger signal. It leads to more excitable receptors to alternative splicing of DNA. It even modifies the current sodium channels to make them stay open longer and to be more excitable by glutamate. On top of that, it actually modifies the shape of the dendrites themselves to enhance the signal. And as you can see, things are starting to get really complicated here as so we're just scratching the surface. So let's back up and wise up. We're getting just a glimpse of the complexity in the brain. There's thought to be 100 billion neurons in our brain with 10 to the 15th synapses, 10 to the 15th different interactions of one neuron with the next. If we compare that with the universe, there's 10 to the 11th stars in the universe. That means there's 10,000 times as many synapses in a single brain, in your brain, as there are stars in the universe. At this point, all we can do is stop and join with the psalmist in saying, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made.